Oi you, it's time for another episode of Dorothy and the Dealer. Let's tune into the conversation. God, there's so many songs I love. I love the one about, I love the Rachel Patton fight song. Oh, yeah, okay, Because cool. I've used but that, uh, you know, I've used okay, that for we'll the... We'll wait for the podcast. And I don't we'll know. Okay, yeah, you do know it. You ready? <sighs> and Ooh. we're live. Who are you saying that to? No, we're fucking to? not. Are we not? Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> we have had... Your microphone is now all Don't worry about my fucking mic. your face. Can you put it above? Because when, when we're live... <laughs> Right, like yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Honestly, today's technology has been extremely Here awesome. And again. Mitch doesn't understand that do, we are do, on do. a podcast do, and that do, perhaps do. he needs to do, 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 not do. make so many Tone rustling, down. tapping <laughs> sounds <laughs> like <laughs> that. And true to square window. <laughs> insane. Okay, let's do uh, this. We have a guest. We have a guest. The beautiful Rachel. Now, Rachel, we met. Oh, how long ago did we meet, Rachel? Uh, 2017. 2017. Oh. You I know, remember. it feels I'll like. Are you, nervous? Nervous. Are you nervous? Yes, I you should be. You should be fucking nervous. <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather be talking to like a CEO right now and lecturing <laughs> them on their debt. <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, that's goodness. Funny. All right, all right. Anyway, so we've been hassling Mitch about like making noises on the tables and stuff like yeah. that. And he was like, we should just be with... I promise. We should just be with, I won't make any noise. We should just be like Joe Rogan, where we just smoke a lot of weed before we start <laughs> these podcasts. Yeah. And then Drink just, some fucking serious whiskey, smoke some weed. And then it won't matter what other fucking noises are <laughs> it's, you know, it's only a matter of time before those fuckers do some shrooms or some ayahuasca before they go live. Oh, okay. Or during a live. <laughs> anyway, Rachel, Hi. how are you going, darling? Yeah, going well. It's good going to really see well, you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Rachel, because you know that we start our podcast with a song. What is your song, like a, a song that you've got forefront of mind or that you love or whatever? Just oh, and song. for me, it's uh, Rachel Patton's fight song. It just, you know, that whole idea of no matter what happens, you just got to keep going for what you, what's this important to you. That's song. it. That's it. My Take back my life. life. No, song. not left it to right. Song. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong song. <laughs> you, Lola used to sing that all of the time. Do you remember Lola and Lexi? God, I wasn't this paying attention. I was too busy song. at work. And, and <laughs> she didn't go. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you know why we do a song at the beginning? No, I don't. No, I don't know why we do a song. I don't even know why we do a song. <laughs> I think because one, the first one, you, I, you thought you were going to stump me with the song and it was the song from The Odd, Odd Couple, do you remember? And you just started singing it. I can do that right now. Okay. <laughs> Rachel's sitting there going, why the fuck did they bring us to be here if they're just going to sit and sing and <laughs> two farts out of their mouth? <laughs> Do you know that that was oh, my father-in-law? It's all good, Mel. I've known you guys a long time. Oh, that was no. my father-in-law. <laughs> We've been away together, right? That's so we, right. Have, we, we have. We have. We have it. Well, what we just happens in about South America <laughs> stays <laughs> in South America. We were just talking about that. As of approximately now-ish, two years ago, yeah. we were preparing to go to South America. Wow. We were around South America. Yeah, and life has changed a little bit. Just a little. Just a little. For yeah. someone who loves to travel, the idea of... I'm oh, getting on a plane. Well, you just said that you're <laughs> just about, years, you're going to Marga River. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going somewhere. It's all good. Yeah. It's I'm all not good. in Melbourne right now, locked <laughs> away, right? So yeah. good. Oh, those poor bastards. Um, okay, so let's talk, Rachel. So we have you on. You, um, um, you know, as we talked when we talk to our clients, you've got like we we like to talk to people who've got a good story, and we talk about you all of the time. So I'm on on all my Zoom calls. I tend to mention you quite often. Um, for our wealth principles because you um, you came from a financial background when you first met us. So do you want to start telling the story and then we can get dive deep into kind Embellish of... Embellish or elaborate. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the key for me on the story was having a, you know, a corporate institutional banking background, had been in debt and finance for you know, since the age of 19. I always really? thought I knew, yeah, I always thought I knew what was going on with my personal finances and then... I came across to see you guys, and the reason I went to that uh, a seminar, the, the, the Mastermind and money. and money seminar, was a friend of mine said, oh, let's hang out. Do you want to come along to this thing? And I'm like, oh, what's someone going to tell me about finance? And <laughs> it was extraordinary because it was that mixture of the finance and the personal development stuff and how it all links together. And 
and getting your mindset right will then help you with your wealth that mm. has absolutely changed my life and I think is preparing for part of today. I went back and had a look at the first wealth principles, you know, spreadsheet I did and at that time I was trying to save, you know, $400 a month was what I was trying to save and the goal was 10% of my income was $1,000 a month. You know, mm. three years later I'm saving $1,400 a week because of you guys. Wow! wow. Right. That's, That's so good. And the, and the story in between there is I've paid back, you know, and I, because I work for a bank, I couldn't go to the bank and say, I, um, you know, I can't pay my debt, what am I going to do? I had to work through this story of I came back from Peru, I made the decision to go, you know what, I'm going to sell my house because I wanted to do block or brick and I couldn't get finance. I've never not mm. been able to get finance. What's going on? So it sold the house, it got all this cash back into the system, went to live with mum and dad because they had student accommodation. We threw the students out and then you look 12 months later. Threw the students out. Well, we did. They were, they were going <laughs> home so I moved in. Uh, you know, I was paying I pay mum and dad exactly what the students were paying them but now I'm getting the internet, Foxtel, you know, the electricity, the gas. You're milking those parents. <laughs> I am, I am. I am. And meanwhile, in the backyard, there's four fucking students living in a tent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hello. Hi. What's the internet access code? Yeah, that was my house. What are you doing? So, <laughs> so 12 months later, if, and I fast forward to, you know, a COVID environment how where... To write better and how to hate Hold on. Oh, there we go. That's that's the monkey. Can you just get back? Monkey, can you just can you can you just you might want to write that number down and yeah. just I've yes. Got, I've got. No, uh, you got a <laughs> hole in your um, just under here. Look, you got a hole in your arm. Just yeah. Look. <laughs> You're terrible. <sighs> sorry, can you repeat that? No, okay, sorry. so sorry. We so that we go twelve. Point. You know, twelve months. So two thousand and nineteen made the decision to sell my property. It was probably at the bottom of the cycle but almost irrelevant because it was about the cash flow yeah. mm. and then you fast forward to this year where if I was living in a house on my own I would have been isolated and gone nuts for, mm. for 12 weeks right because we're in a situation now where I may be going to work once a week to the office everything else is you're doing at home now it's all you know it's all on the phone and everything else and I would have been yeah whereas now I go home and have dinner with my parents you know mm. so I, I walk through the house and it's like I zig if I want to have dinner I zag if I just go upstairs because yeah. <laughs> I need some alone time That's it so actually cool. has worked out really well but you know you talk about um and me and you guys talk about this really well you know your self-worth equals your net worth yeah. and that was where the story of working with you guys was to start with the relationships and you of getting my headspace right which allows me to save Fourteen hundred dollars a week, you mm. know, and during that, sorry. So no, no. Well, let's start back there because I think it's important. Like I think that concept we want to get back to the self worth, net worth. But what was going on for you then that you? I mean, I know you talk about being in the banking world, and you talk about the fact that you know you saw a lot of money going through, you know, your hands in terms of work, but you felt like there was not that you didn't have access to that in some way, right? Well, I didn't have. Literally, it was the system and the organisation and the thought process. Mm. Right. So if I think about, you know, and I spent, I love spreadsheets, and once you gave <laughs> us the system on, you know, the wealth principles, if you want, my, I'd always been, if I want to spend the money, I'll spend it because I know I have it. Yeah. Right. So you'd have $15,000 sitting in your account, but then you get a $10,000 credit card bill for that month. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go, oh, well, what have yeah. I done wrong? And then yeah. you try and analyse, I bought this coffee, I did this, I did and, – and you could never get ahead of it, whereas you start with that's your allowance for the month. And as you guys know, I've got a number of I know. debit cards that sit in my wallet. But now the question is – and a great example was I wanted to do a personal development course with um, NLP and some other stuff and I've gone, it was going to cost me $250 a month and I've got to pay it off on installments. Do I have that money? I went straight to the – line item for personal development and I save I allow myself you know a hundred dollars a week so I'm going well two hundred fifty dollars a month comes out of that without me even having to think about it Mm -hmm. right then I put that line item into the spreadsheet and and move forward Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then you know you talk about that whole idea of stretching yourselves I don't articulate it very well but that idea of you want to do something you put the demand Demand on yourself yourself, right and I did that and twice I've had pay increases yeah and then the third year and look you know I'm very grateful I've got a job at the moment and I'm a central worker and I understand there won't be any bonuses this year but that doesn't bother me because I know there's other sources of income that are coming in that have replaced Mm -hmm. the reliance on my my salaried income yeah by doing the work with you guys and then the networks I've develop from being around you guys and the people that you bring into the group, Mm -hmm. which is really incredible as well. Mm. So talk to me about the self-worth thing because I think that's an important place to start because obviously, 
you, you that was a problem there, right? Was well, not clearly a problem. Well, I did like it's an opportunity, obviously. But what was going on for you? I think the clear the thing for me, I didn't hadn't really got my head around is I used to just spend money. You go, oh, you go out with friends, and you're all of a sudden you're in the shops. Oh, I really like that pair of shoes. I'll just buy it. Did I actually need the shoes? The mm. answer is probably not and I yeah. know that now because there's 50 of them sitting in the cupboard right now mm-hmm. but what do I do with them uh, but you get caught up in what others are doing around you so as my friendship groups have shifted as my thought processes and I've evolved in my thinking I now go out with friends for di- lunch and we're talking about you know what Robert Kiyosaki is saying about gold and what's Jim Rickard saying and you know what's what's the the overlying text of what's going on with these society and then what we're actually trying to look at underneath that you guys talk a lot about with you've got to question what you're being told because you've got to see both sides of the, yeah. the equation, which I never yeah. questioned. Three years ago, I didn't question any of that yeah. because I didn't mm. know how to. And if someone had come to me with that information, it just went over my head because it meant nothing. That's yeah, right. that's a really important point. Because I mean, that's a really important point because I didn't know how to. Because it feels, I think, sometimes like we're bred not to question do you know what i mean we're bred to take everything on face value that we're going to give you information and the information we're going to give you is designed to keep you comfortable we don't give you information that's going to keep you uncomfortable because you might step up a revolt or you know you'll start listening to your insides and stop listening to us and when we have you listening to us well then we have some sort of control over you we can dumb you down we can give you repetitive things and you stay stuck in your cycles and da 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 but I think I would really love what you just said there, because if you think about it, it's we just don't know how to question, you know, and it's not that if we question suddenly we're a fucking conspiracy theorist or suddenly we need a, you know, we need some sort of fucking tinfoil hat. If we understand how to question in a balanced way, that's a different ball game altogether. That changes the game altogether. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because you were saying that obviously, like at an earlier age, you were doing things because it was the done thing to do, you know, people going out and buying the shoes and buying this and spending money on these things. Yeah, it's the evolution of what I understood because that's what yeah. we did. And now yeah. I've kind of evolved out of those friendships. And I'll talk, mm-hmm. to, I'll, I still talk to those people, but I've become very clear and potentially almost brutal about it. We've only got so much time. There's so much I want to do. I have to be surrounded by people who get that. So when we're having conversations, you're continuing to move forward and, and learning more and doing more. And whilst those have, those people have now become outer friendship circle people, so to say, there's this core, in a core of maybe five or six people that you just do some amazing and incredible stuff with because they mm. get it because mm. as you keep finding things and seeing things and delving into things you understand more and a great example for me is understanding say what a joe dispenza Dispenza says around um you know meditating and and that whole idea you guys talk about too about you've got to be already in the emotional state of Mm -hmm. what you want before it'll arrive in your life you talked about that in 2017 it's taken me another three years to actually really understand to get that what that means i still mm. can't practice it very well but yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. I, I get the theory i, yeah. I get it yeah and it, but, but it's like the, the shingles practice. fall off your eyes yeah You've, the first practice is getting it it's, it's being aware that that's, yeah. possible. that's that's the first step is where you go oh fuck okay i get that and then let, when you get it further you're like oh fuck now i get that I heard it, but I never really heard it. Yes. And now I'm hearing it. Yeah, absolutely. It. And now, yeah. it, because I know there's a gap between those two places, then I know there's more for me to learn, you know, and now you become hungry because it's like a kid playing a video game. They want to get to the next level. Okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? It's good that you have a core group of friends that are all doing that. Well, I see that as being, obviously, you've shifted from that where previously it sounds like you were more focused on the short-term kind of gain and what you were going to get from, you know, the outcome from, you know, spending the money, yeah, like the was. shoes and stuff. It was the short term. Now you're like, well, hang on a second. What's more important for, you, for me here is to be focused on my long-term vision, my long-term outcome. And your whole, uh, I mean, you're, you you love working with finance. You love working with numbers and you love working with spreadsheets. Like Not everybody's like that, right? So, <laughs> but... The fact of the That's matter my superpower, is, yes. yeah. But the the fact of the matter is, is that regardless of like whoever we are and whatever we're interested in, it's a matter of looking forward to the long term. Because if we're focused on the short term, we're focused on 
I, I think this is where the self worth thing comes in. And correct me if I'm wrong, or if if this doesn't relate mm. to you, but this is how this is the the self worth thing comes in when we don't feel good enough about ourselves and who we are. We will spend our money trying to fill that gap, trying to make ourselves feel like we are better, or to 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 soften the blow of the pain that we're feeling out in the world. So we'll drink and we'll eat and we'll buy the shoes and we'll buy the clothes and we'll do all the things, buy the cars, go on the holidays, etc. because we're trying to fill a gap that isn't filled, right? And when you do something about that gap and when you do something about the self-worth and you know how to manage the net worth stuff, then you're able to focus on the long term then. You're able to shift away from the concept of, I just have to fill this hole right now and I can actually look forward because I'm I'm actually okay. I don't need this to satisfy me because I'm fulfilled. Absolutely. And it's actually the awareness piece. So three years ago, I didn't know that's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. It's the journey with you guys around mm-hmm. understanding, well, that's because that's what you've always been taught. That's what you're always going to do mm-hmm. until you know something different. I use a very simple example. So I do a lot of kinesiology work with yeah. with Joe, who yeah. you know went through all the programs with you guys, and, and I went to South to, America with us. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. And I, I went to her and I said, Joe, I'm really struggling with sleeping at the moment. And she goes, Well, how much light do you have in your room? I said, What do you mean? And I've suddenly realised, you know, I've got a heater that had got a little blue light that yeah. lights up the room. I've got my alarm clock with the big thick red face, light, the yeah. red light, and I, I turned all of that off. Yeah. I removed 90% of the light from the room that I had and I've been sleeping like a baby ever since. And she kind of goes to me, well, you know, I kind of sometimes feel you've always been told you've got to have light in your room because that's what you grew up with, but you don't really because if you're not sleeping well, then you're not thinking. Mm -hmm. Because I've noticed, you know, the last probably month and a half because I haven't been sleeping well, I've fallen out of the habit of, you know, getting up in the morning, exercising, meditating, doing my hour Mm -hmm. of of learning, like that hour of power that Robin Sharma talks about to to, to really was delivering a day. Yeah. And now I've gone back into this masses of, oh, I get up and then because you're working from home, you brush your teeth, you eat your breakfast and then you're at your computer and you you haven't thought about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that eight weeks of when I was on song, so to speak, with focusing on me for that hour completely thinking differently, acting differently, talking differently. And you kind of go, now you've got to be aware of when you're on the wagon and off mm-hmm. yeah. off your game and then be able to pivot back on. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think, you know, part of, because in some case, you know, it's like recovery from addiction or anything else. Part of recovery, as I'm always saying to people, is you have to fall off the wagon to realise that there is one so mm. you can get back on yeah, the fucking thing. Absolutely. Again, because, because when you're on it and it's a full wagon, you know, you're learning more from that. You're on there and you feel as if Jesus, okay, yeah. And so it's, so uh, it, when we lose appreciation of the wagon that we're on, we tend to fall off it so that we can remember that we have to get back on it again and how rich it is for us to be in there with the knowledge, with the wisdom, with the practices and everything that we need to be able to get ahead. That's cool. Mm, that's very cool. So um, you so you started with Mastermind of Money with us, right? You mm, went away yes. and implemented the wealth principles, yeah. right? And I remember you saying something about um, you implemented them mostly and you and it made a massive difference in your life. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, it's really ironic uh, when I think about it, Mills. So, yeah, I implemented it over that year in 2017 uh, and uh, in two, so did and, – and that year at STP, oh, I got told, um, you know, I've got this pay increase. I'm like, wow, that's, that's unheard of. I work in a bank. We don't do that. And then the year after, it happened again and I got a promotion out of it, right? Yeah. So. And then it was actually only listening to you when you were talking in um, during COVID in April, mm-hmm. where you said because I used to do it fortnightly, and you said something around the lines of uh, blah blah blah, go to a weekly cycle. Mm-hmm. I thought, what's that going to achieve? Yeah. Bang, Ch- game changer again. Yeah, just and then you add the money you're saving because you couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, debt's coming down. The, yeah. the you know, the splurging accounts and everything, and the account to you know go out and have fun is is growing. But it's like, well, I could put that to something else, or I could I could do other things with it now. And it's just completely, it's just all these little shifts that now, when someone says there's an investment opportunity, yet their money was there, yeah, which I never had. And then, ironically enough, when I first started the wealth principles, and I balanced everything, and I realised I had twenty thousand dollars worth of money sitting around, I didn't know was slopping around doing things because I never really knew it was there. Mm, mm. I think there comes a point with all of us where we look at things and we go, oh, my God, things have shifted and I know that I've changed the way I'm thinking because of certain things. For me, one of the 
turning point for me was coming to India with you the first time. Uh-huh. And I remember you saying, are you coming or are you not? And I was like, I don't know. I haven't got the money. Like, I don't know how I'm going to go because this is right when we – well, not long after we first met, right? Yeah. And eventually you you ended up saying, like, just make a choice, God damn it. Like, you, you, one foot in, one foot out. And in the end I was like, I didn't want to say no. I just felt that that going to India was going to be – life changing for me and I didn't want to say no but I didn't know how I was going to afford it but there was something in me saying yes that mm. just in that uh, we were driving down south and you just said just pick one because you're just you haven't made a decision so I ended up saying yes and in me saying yes everything changed it was like something clicked inside of me that went okay now I've committed to it even though it was just a word it was like I'd committed to it I'd put that demand on myself and I was going to go and I was going to experience it I didn't know how still but I knew that my intention was set for that as opposed to not going. But then when we were in India, we walked into a, an art shop mm-hmm. and because I'd done everything I could just to get myself to India, right? Yeah. Oh, so okay. when I was in India, it was like India is not expensive. It was, it was easy enough to, you know, be able to get through in India. But we walked into the art shop and you saw that painting that you've got. Is it here or in the house? I think it's here now. I think it's here. And he walked into the shop and he goes, oh, my God, I loved it. And everybody looked at this painting and went, oh, my God, that was awesome. And he was able just to take it off the wall and just buy it and walk out. And Mm. I'm like, I want to be able to do that. Like, I want to be able to just, that's the position I want to be able to be in. And the next time we travel, I want to be able to do it. And it was only a year later that we were travelling and I was able to do that and just not have to think about where that money was coming from because it was already kind of there. It's kind of like this, like Mm. a click where you go, right, I know that I'm missing a piece because I can see it's possible. I'm just not at that level. And I had only just started implementing the wealth principles and I had messed it up. I tell everybody the story that I'd used my savings and as a result of me using my savings, it was I screwed everything up because I just... But it was the best thing I've ever done because I've never I've not touched them since, right? But it's like that turning point and that click. And I know with you, you know, you've been on a lot of the calls that I do, you know, and helping people with wealth principles. But I I tell everybody the story of the saving thing, you know, and and, um, when somebody buys you dinner. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That if, you know, saving, you know, there's all that rules around saving that that are relative. But I always, I love it when you come back with me because you always come back and go, Milsey, I thought I didn't really put that into place. But when I did that, everything went to another level. And they seem so little and insignificant, those things, but they actually mean a lot. They're actually have, a, a, they're powerful in in the impact that they have on your actual bank account and also then for in your self-worth because you can see your net worth growing and you see that actually what's happening. Would the, you agree? The, the funny thing is when we're dealing with money, we're dealing with energy currency, right? And people can't see energy, right? Yeah. Unless it's in its dense, ignorant form, which is the table, the carpet, everything yeah. else. So we're having to trust that part of ourselves. And it's funny when something like that happens, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, this is a fucking miracle. And it's, no, 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 it's not a miracle. It's only a miracle because you're ignorant. Because you have things actually yeah, fucking and that work. Is, that is so clear because exactly what you said, it's the little wins that are creating the bigger wins. So yeah. I was sitting there and I'm telling you what I'm saving now and I'm going, mm. I've got to do a 10% on the number I've got now. Where am I going to find $6,000? Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I went down, saw my bank guys, had to give them some paperwork because I'm doing a couple of things. And they're going, oh, you've got this loan and we're charging you this. Let's go see. They've said, let's go see if we can get you a better interest rate. True as God. <laughs> that's, <laughs> the number. Yeah. that's the number I needed to cover yeah. the income, that the yeah. increase I had. Mm-hmm. I, and that's time and time again. We've talked about insurances dropping, account fees dropping. Yeah. Um, I'm spending less on eating out now mm-hmm. because of working from home mm-hmm. and, and a, a, you know, a different view on what's good for you and what's not, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But the thing so, is you don't miss – so this is the thing, right? I think a lot of people hear that and go, but I like eating out and I want to be able to do these things, right? And I think that people think that if they've got this long-term vision and they've got this idea that they want to save more, that they can't have all of that stuff. But that's an illusion, right? Because as soon as you start focusing on the long-term, the the short-term stuff just comes to you, right? And it gets better. Yeah. It does because the number of times now, oh, Rachel, we need to go out for lunch. So, you know, since we've been going back to work, all all these... uh, you know, for me, and I look, I know it's different for everyone, but the various law firms and whoever else were going, oh, we haven't caught up, let's go out and eat. And I'm doing all of that, but someone else is paying for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, but, the, but that, I mean, the thing is, is that that's, 
that's again is that self worth issue and what ha- starts to happen is that you start to see that within money there's a mosaic everything is intrinsically linked you know and like our self worth is related to our net worth as our net worth goes up our self worth goes up as our self worth goes up our net worth goes up and then we value ourselves more and then life starts to feed back to us that this is what's happening mm. you're doing your internal work you're building your self worth and as a result of that I'm going to show you in the place that you love the most which is your fucking accounts and your spreadsheets so your spreadsheets start to grow and now you're feeling inspired like holy shit mm. look at how this system works but and it's like there's also that part of us that is like when we come from the conditioning you know when, when how, how old were you met us when you met oh, us oh I was what I'm 45 now so I was what 42 42, 42 yeah. so you're 42 years doing the one thing yeah absolutely yeah. and then you ha- you make this change and y- you know you're still fighting against the 42 years but then again you're not even fighting against that you're fighting against the fucking lineage <laughs> the way that, your parents of, handled you know, it, the, of, of, their parents. And I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've come from a family where both of my grandfathers on both sides lost all their money because they got ripped off. Right. By um, one grandfather, you know, owned it half of Kerala and he guaranteed a loan for someone and lost everything. And the other grandfather on my mother's side was ripped off by his family with a tannery they had. Oh so, you know, God. so you come to Australia with both of my parents with nothing, literally yeah. $3 in their pocket. Mm. And so your my bringing up was you know you've got to get a good job you've got to work really mm-hmm. hard yeah. you don't take risks yeah and mm-hmm. then come along to see you guys mm-hmm. and it's this idea of you know you do the work on yourself mm-hmm. and things will change and it does and I, I looked back at you know and as you do more of the work with you the mission statement and look I don't I, I'm a terrible student at this right I've written it all down do I read it no but I went no. back and looked at it and I've got oh but that's happened and yeah. I'm doing this now and yeah. that. That is just by declaring once mm-hmm. to the universe mm-hmm. what I wanted to achieve. Then yeah. I think about, okay, so coming back to what you said, Mills, if I did more of the work, because <laughs> you guys yeah. told us, hey, Those as you told us at the beginning yeah. of COVID, yeah. I've achieved, you know, 20, you know, 20% of what I wanted. So I might have been an 80%, which reminds me then that I am an inherently lazy person. So I've got <laughs> to find, which is why I love, you know, block or brick with Matt. Such a yeah. great person to work with, yeah. constantly worrying about, what how can he serve me better yeah. as your client and works really hard for it and mm-hmm. i go that's great outsource to, to matt all good i don't have to do it i'm the same <laughs> i love I'm matt because <laughs> because <laughs> as much as i and like the so whole developing us, yeah. it's all, all i ever have to do is he goes can you sign this yeah. for me can like, you write the check i'm like yeah great can you sign this and i'm kind of put loads of money back in your account really oh soon. yeah then. yeah absolutely no and you just sit there going and so for me, I worked out, again, working with yourselves, my superpower is, I call it a superpower, but, you know, I love helping people with their own money and yeah. you know, great, some really great friends I've built from this and helped them work through some, some financial situations. And their feedback to me is, you know, you've changed my life. Yeah. And I'm going, all I've done is just shared with you what I've learned for the last 25 years of my life. Yeah. And therefore, you know, I learned really quickly that my superpower is not going off and negotiating with counsel. That's Matt's job. Yeah. And that's yeah. what Matt's really good at. Yeah. So. Yeah. And he friggin' loves it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, how do you love that? He goes, I fucking love it. Yeah, that's I know. Right. That's I right. love and you just surround, together. being in your community allows you to surround yourself with all these people who can help you with doing that. Yeah. And you know what? I think it is, it's not just about us. It's not. It's about finding your groove, right? It's about finding what you value, what mm. you love, and making sure that you go towards yeah. that, you know, and, and living in your values. I mean, we talk about this ad nauseum, right, because it's so important, though, because... And we were just just before you came in actually earlier on today. We were listening to, um, you know, people talking about how important living in your values is. You know, and the fact that when you live in your values, your whole body literally lights up. Yeah. So that it helps you along the pathway. You feel inspired. You're not tired. And when you when you're able to do that, and you're able to f- uh, focus on that long term and know what it is you're here for. The rest of it, like, I think the biggest thing for people, um, Rachel, is that, you know, we talk about money a lot, but it's never about the money. No, the money's a byproduct. The money is a byproduct. That's the irony. Yeah, Yeah. and the money comes, and this is why money is actually the easiest thing to master, because the problem that people face is they look at the money and they think that I need more of you, I need more money. Money is never the thing they're after. The thing that they're after is the freedom, is the connection, is the community, is the success, whatever it is, and they want to feel that stuff. 
and they think that money is going to get them that. But if they don't get, if, if they go for the money, they're never going to get to feel the success and the freedom and the love and all the other things. They have to go for the feeling first. Mm. And when you go for the feeling and therefore that is living in your values, doing what you love, having that long-term vision, the money comes anyway. And the problem is, is that people want to get to some outcome. They want the promotion. They want the new partner. They want the house. They want the car, whatever. But money keeps getting in the way and they have to keep turning turning their head to see where's where, like, these bills come in, I can't sort this out. Instead of being so focused on the vision and having money just take care of itself, you but know? The, the problem is people give up on, on that. Be, and this is why it affects your self-worth. If you, if you continue, if you're indoctrinated into a system that doesn't work and you mm, keep trying you to run the fucking system yeah. and it stops and it's not working, eventually that affects your self-worth because you feel stupid, like you're not able to accomplish things. And then if you think about it, everybody, like that's what the masses are doing. You know, they're, they're indoctrinated into a system that is doing this. all they were told, you know. That's all they're told. And then, so they feel worthless and like they're never going to be able to get there. And, and only the select few get there and, and only the chosen ones get there. And then you have these scales of lower class, middle class, upper class. And then what happens is, is that they lose faith in themselves because they feel as if they haven't got what it takes based on the system they've been taught. But if you understand, you know, if you understand the system of laws and you understand the system of energy and you understand this, that the system is actually in your favor, the problem is you're following a human system, which mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. has indoctrinated you to, to not succeed because that serves the chosen few at the top, yeah. as opposed to being who I guarantee are following the correct system, which we've watched through our research over time. You follow universal laws and principles. You can't fuck it up. You can't get it wrong. You can't make a mistake. You can't fail because no matter what, as long as you follow the laws and the laws have stood the test of time, as long as you follow the laws, you're fine. And the matter, money is matter. Money is energy. It's governed by the laws. If you understand the laws, you can't make a mistake. Mm. You know, so, and I, I mean, I really feel like in my time period, I'm only beginning to break that lineage for my kids. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know that I'm, and I know I won't fully perfect it within my time period, but what I do know is that I will pass on a legacy that allows them to get better and better and better mm. at it. Mm. Do you know what I Which mean? Which changes that generational line. That yeah. changes the line. And so I think I, I, I think between the three of us, we got that at an, a point in time in our lives where we realised, fuck, you know, we can be the change, you know, so that the family doesn't have to still feel the ramifications of the mm. grandparents losing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We can be the change that allows the future to actually understand that, you know, you're, you have great value. To the, to the universe, to the world. You know, people, you know, when you understand your value and you bring that into the world, people want to participate. They want to buy your product. They want to take you out for dinner. They want to fly yeah, you around the world. Right. They want to fucking hang out with you. You know, they want to ask you for help. Does that make sense? And I think there's a great responsibility in people, you know, understanding the laws, understanding how money works. And money is really fucking simple. Like, it's really... I remember you saying to me at one stage, I sat in that audience and I thought, these guys are fucking mad. Yeah. Like, what, what are they talking about? I think yeah, a few people think that. And then I go... And, go, oh, yeah, and it mad, was... Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the beauty and the genius is... And it's as you as as I said, as the shingles fall away, you hear the layers. Yeah. So every time I hear you guys, I learn something new, even though you're saying yeah. a similar concept because I have evolved. To yes. hear your message differently. Yeah. That's and right. I think, um, you know, a great example is and it's that requirement that as you evolve, you have to take responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like coming out of Peru and, we, you know, and a sense of gratitude and just learning, like washing in a cold shower, but realising yeah. I was having a cold shower up in Lake Titicaca yeah. and the locals were having to go to the lake to get water so I could use their yeah. pot potable water for a shower. Yeah. You suddenly go... You know, that's very humbling. Then you go, I don't yeah. need to live in my three-storey house anymore. I yeah. can quite comfortably sell that to achieve my next goal and dream. Yeah. Instead of going, well, society says you have to have a house. And it took me till 2018 to realise the dream of buying that house was more a friend of mine saying, oh, you've been renting for 20 years. Don't you think mm. you should own a house? Mm. Oh, yeah, good point. Mm. But yeah. was never my dream because I hate gardening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd come home and I'm like, 
Yeah, great. I have to weed that place. Yeah, I know, but that's it. And then I'm watering this shit and I'm going, I'm paying all this water for something that there's a reason I used to love renting an apartment with a pool, a gym, a sauna, where the owner paid the strata fees and I just waltz around with, you know, one check a week out for for rent. There's a reason I did that. That water in Lake Titicaca was, I spoke and mine are like this the whole time. And I thought it it was because of the altitude, but it was the fucking water. It was freezing, wasn't it? How good was that trip, though? It was an amazing trip because. Because it was the idea of really realising what is and isn't important and yeah. having those conversations with people as you're learning things about yourself at the same time. Yeah. yeah those 100%. mattresses. Do you remember those mattresses? What about those blankets that weighed you down? Like they, you know, they talk <laughs> they about weighted blankets yeah. here and you pay for them <laughs> there. It's just like... Yeah. You don't Where need did you to get worry. the hair for these blankets? Oh, off the kids in the village. <laughs> <laughs> they were, it was, oh my God. They, honestly, it was like if somebody put a plank on top of me. It was, it was terrible. Terrible. But, you know, I think, um, and we talked about this before we started, you know, we're in, a, we're in a situation at the moment. I know there are a lot of people doing it tough. Mm. And there are people who have had jobs that might not come back for mm. five mm. to ten years. And you've got mm. to wake up and realise, well, the lifestyle I had how do I afford it if I can't afford it do I have to make some really hard decisions and you know take my kids out of private school and 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 sell that dream Mm -hmm. house because I've got to reset Mm -hmm. to then potentially have you know open that door that you've never thought about before Mm -hmm. to make the change because you know working in the bank you know our CEOs come out and said it as well if you've got the opportunity to make those decisions yourself please do it before we have to come and do it for you because you know the simple thing is the bank doesn't give change if the bank comes in and does it for you yeah you're going to lose everything. If you can make that decision for yourself in the next six months or three mm. months or whatever it is, mm. you'll come out with something that allows you to start again and continue your life. How, how I mean, how, uh, look, I, it, you know, I think that life puts pressure on us for us to wake up. You know, if, if you're listening to this, transformyourwealth.com.au, you need to just get on and have a fucking look at it, especially now because there is a window in life to be able to do that. But how are you finding... The, the markets. I mean, where uh, iron ore is through the roof, mm. gone bananas. You know, people are like, we we have no more property. We literally have no yeah. more property. So I'll give you a couple of stats there, Mitch, which I follow, which is quite interesting. So I personally believe the future of Australia is really bright, but we've got a couple of years of really yeah. tough. So, and I go back, I like to be a student of economic history, right? You go yeah. back to the Spanish flu. We talked about vaccines. We talked about and people were getting jabs for this, that and the other. But in reality... It just burnt itself out over two or three seasons. But in the time period, the economic carnage for those who weren't able to to lift themselves out of a hole was quite Mm. extraordinary. Mm. But Mm. there was absolutely the roaring 20s followed for those who had the opportunity and the resources to take advantage of it. So if you look at – there's some stats coming out of Melbourne at the moment from a property market which basically are saying uh, uh, realestat.com and RP Data are saying the number of Melburnians who've got flexibility in their jobs and they're looking 20% of those people who are looking for real estate are looking in WA and 20% are looking in Queensland. Why? Because of, you know, we don't have COVID. We're not aware. We've got one third of the country's space and we've got 10% of the population. That's right. You know, people don't realise. I, I, every time I used to have visitors from the east come over, I'd say, welcome to the great state of Western Australia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lived in, I've lived in Sydney, I've lived in Melbourne, I've lived in Adelaide, I've lived in Brisbane, I've lived in Canberra. Yeah. Canberra's too cold. Yeah, freezing. Sydney, Been there once and that's Sydney's, the, I call her a very hard mistress, right? Yeah. She's like New York. She'll take everything out of you and yeah. then some. And that whole idea of to travel in Sydney, hours on end to get anywhere. Yeah. Melbourne, understated, very Sophia Loren, very, you know, very, um, very glamorous, but in that understated way. But again, you've got four million people that are there. Yeah. And, you know, they're quite conservative too. And then you come to WA where you've got amazing weather, Mm -hmm. you've got wide open spaces. And, you know, I came home and have probably had the best career outcome of my life by coming home and living in my authentic values. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I could, you know buy or rent and still eat at the same time yeah. whereas in Sydney sometimes you're making a decision of am I going to eat or am I going to pay my rent mm-hmm. for yeah. some people yeah. I'll be I'll be like a lot of the time I'll be because people just want to say that they live in Sydney yeah yeah you know I live in central Sydney or I live in Sydney mm. I, I've, I've, it's you, you've absolutely nailed it there in terms of how you've You've categorised each state. Like, I love Melbourne, but Sydney, I never clicked with it. It was like, I just didn't feel it. Do you know what I mean? I, I went back last year in, in May for a course. Yeah. And we were out, um, and it was a women's retreat. And a fabulous experience, again, very life-changing and very uh, life-affirming about, you know, I'm 45, I'm single, I've not had kids. And that had always been this um, real 
uh, for me, I held it back. It, I felt like it held it back because I have I been a woman because I've not never given birth. Mm. And I went through this whole birthing process and it was suddenly for me, my birth is every time I help one of our key clients who are some of the biggest cool. property developers in Australia deliver some amazing, a 5,000 land master plan city, mm. right? It's a different format. And then I spent a lot of time with my nephew and my sister's quite happy to let me uh, <laughs> look after her child. Take them away. As you know, the maternal instinct in me, but I go, I don't want that all the time. So, but until you, society's told you that, you know, are you a woman unless you've done this? Yeah. And then you suddenly realise and question and go, well, I am who I am and I'm very comfortable in it, but I yeah. had to pull the shingles away. But after that course, I came out of the country into Sydney and there was jackhammers and there was fire trucks and there was ambulances right. and I had to retreat into the womb of Sydney so I went underground mm. into a food court because I was absolutely oh, right. my 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 nerve endings were frazzled mm. and I thought I don't know how I lived here for nine years mm. oh did you live there for nine I years I did and I, I think about the stress I was under uh, and the poor decisions I was making and the alcohol I would yeah. drink and yeah. the <laughs> I didn't do drugs, but you know the alcohol would more than made up for for all of it because he was yeah, yeah, just <laughs> go straight to drugs now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's cheaper too. Disclaimer, because it's no. uh, it's the soothe it, to soothe your nerves because yeah. it was just and I'm well, I'm like oh thank yeah. God I'm now yeah. back in Perth where yeah. you can yeah. be on an escalator it's, it's, it's and no one's going to knock you off. Yeah. It's kind of like going to New York, you know. And when when you go there, like you, you just you watch it on the movies, and the whole thing twenty four seven is woo. Yeah, that's right. Burr, burr, burr. Just fire trucks and, yeah, and police was, cars, and it's Sydney. nonstop. It's like fuck. You know, I, I do you remember? It was like holy shit. Yeah, this is. I feel like it's something. There's going to be a camera come out of somewhere, and I'm going to be in the middle of CSI or something. <laughs> yeah, like that. That's right. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. We, we just wanted to see how you'd react to all that noise. So yeah. it's very. Um, it, 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 as you as you evolve into what we're doing with yourselves and just you hear differently you listen yeah. I, I look at different things on YouTube now yeah. I learn differently I just you hear things you go oh yeah, yeah. you just, you just pick up on stuff that yeah you just pick that it up differently un, the, the unconscious mind doesn't pick up on because I mean you know the unconscious mind we have this conscious part of us and we think that that conscious part of us is actually conscious but it's not because it's run by the unconscious, subconscious, subconscious mind. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. we're so subconsciously suppressed, it's only when there's a unification between the subconscious mind and the conscious mind that we actually fucking wake up to our, our unconsciousness. We become conscious of our unconscious part, you know? And But um, I, I was going to say there, you know, I was talking to Matt. Matt Matt's a, a great guy to talk about in, in terms of, you know, money and, mm. and property and da-da-da-da. And I'm a huge I love property I'm just I just absolutely love property I always have I made my first fortune at 20 years old doing subdivisions and property I'm sitting with fucking Matt one day and I'm like what do you, th what do you think about the future dude and he goes mate we are living in the most desirable state in the world yep, to live I in agree. I'm like really because mate let me tell you he said as soon as those borders open you're going to have money coming from everywhere to get in here we're the safest the furthest away the richest the least amount of people, he said, Western Australia is going to become the most desirable place in the world to live. And I absolutely agree with that, Mitch, mm. and I take that a step further to say that, you know, from a government's perspective, you've got, you know, the security laws in Hong Kong. And in Hong Kong now, one in every seven people are millionaires or multi-millionaires. Really? So if you're on the Australian government, you mm. go, here, we'll just hand you 12,000 visas. If we're going to upset the Chinese government, who cares? I yeah. really think the tilt needs to be away now mm. from... And I have no issue with the Chinese people. I think yeah. it's you know the CCP, the Chinese yeah. government that yeah. is, they're, they're, uh, are creating havoc, and the tilt should be to India, where you know yeah. they're democratic. We speak English as well, yeah. and we're all about commerce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, yeah, I will disclaimer that I am Indian, <laughs> <laughs> born in Australia, slightly biased. Yeah, slightly <laughs> biased, but I just sit there going. You know, it's it's up to us in the world to say, well, I'm not going to put up with you coming in and having a security law in because what's stopping the mm. Chinese walking into Taiwan? You know, yeah. that's the next thing I think we'll see. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm being a dramatist, but yeah. depending on what happens in the U.S. election, I think well, that's the next takeover yeah. we'll see because the world's too busy dealing with a virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. and worrying about and coming back to that idea of again, and you go back to student of history, post the Spanish flu, the Australian immigration numbers just went through the roof. I think right. the Australian government should be offering packages to the, the best and brightest throughout the planet and saying, we welcome you to our country. Yeah. And if I was there, I'd be going to Queensland and WA. Yeah, oh, 100%. I was just talking to someone the other day who's in charge of, not immigration, but 
basically, I can't remember their title, but so it's where the students come from Singapore, Hong Kong, China yeah. to Australia. Mm. Like on exchange. Yeah, on exchange. They were in charge of the of the money end of that for one of the big universities here. I think it was UWA. And we were talking about it and they said, so at the moment, there's no students coming in. And I'm like, right. And so they said, so you have to understand that makes a $400 million a year of just our education, this department within this education. Fucking 400 million, what are you talking about? It's 48 billion across Australia. I know, like, I, really, just one school goes 100%. Now, I said, so, you know, why are, they, why are they coming here? And it goes, because if you're in Singapore and you're in school and you leave school and you go for a job and you're not in the top eight, top 20% of scores and marks, what happens is you don't get any employment. So if the parents see that you're not hitting above 80% with your marks, mm. they literally send you out of the country. I would have been so fucking screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucked, honestly. But they send you out of the country to be educated in Australia, right? So that when you go back to get employment back there, you're able to say, oh, I was educated in UWA. Mm. You know, I was educated yeah. in Melbourne University. All of a sudden your marks don't matter because yeah, you've got the international Because experience. you've got an international... Right. Da -da -da. But you also get access to a visa to become that's, an Australian. That's right. And I'm, that's the key. Yeah. And we like, don't realise... Holy shit. That's why you have so many Indonesians, you have so many Indians, you, uh, you have Pakistan, they look from all over the world. In Melbourne, Australia, they're from all over the world mm. because when they go back home, because I mean, the amount of times I've been in, in, in taxis with um, and Uber drivers that are that are from India or somewhere else, and I'm like, so when you finish here, you're going to stay here? They're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going back to India. I'm like, really? And I'm like, yeah, 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 why? Because India is my mother, but it's Mother India. That's yeah. where I, I love India. I'm like, holy shit. But he said, well, they would say to you, when we go back there, we've got great prospects because we're educated here. And I was like, mm. wow, that just blows my mind. I had no idea that that was why there was such a huge exodus. Well, not so much exodus, but, you know, uh, exchange between Australia and India and the amount of money that was spent just in one school. Four hundred million dollars, mm. and we just found out it's forty-eight billion dollars across the country. Country, which is you know, it's a huge that that service industry, which is where you know I always say if once Perth gets a a base level of you know two to three million people, which are people go, oh, we can't have three million people in Perth, but yeah. you need that sustainable base load that you then don't have the ups and downs when the mining industry is you know all yeah. over the place because we've got a service industry that survives. So. Yeah. It's really interesting because the, the, the knock-on effects, as Matt says, I absolutely believe. Um, I've been saying to everyone, I'm calling it the Great West Australian Land Rush, and you've yeah. called it as well. Yeah. You know, people were getting $55,000 cash, plus you're getting a waiver of your first homeowner's <laughs> grant, plus yeah. you were getting a stamp duty yeah. waiver. That's $75,000, plus the builders were still giving you a pretty good price on your, yeah. your house. As yeah, I yeah. said to people, I was trying to explain internally to some people about why we needed to be a bit more flexible on the deposits, because I said the government of Australia – once in 100 years, is paying 25% of your mortgage. Yeah. That's yeah. that's 10 years off your home loan. Yeah. That If that does not yeah. light your fire and get a generation yeah. of people into housing that would never get in there yeah. but potentially then can build their mm. finances, yeah. I don't know what that's... And I for me, I, it was important that that message yeah. got out because we needed people to stop sitting on their high horse going... Yeah. But that's not responsible lending, Rachel, yeah. because they haven't done this. I said, just let's just to step back for a second, right? Mm. If someone's kept their job during COVID... Yeah. particularly when you're an essential worker, uh -huh. we've basically shown that Armageddon, people will still have jobs. Those people yeah. should be given the right to get a loan. Yeah. And how do you do that? And that's yeah. where Keystart comes into play, right? Yeah. That's where yeah. some of the work that Bank West has done has come into play. Yeah. So. But, I mean, it, 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 I, I've watched ATSEC, you know, and everything that went on with the Royal Commissions and everything else, which is still having that on flow of difficulty for people borrowing, or them, of, of them lending money. Yes, correct. And, um, but... Um, I was sitting with someone the other day, a mate of mine, and he was like, oh, you know, he was humming in hand. And I'm like, what are you fucking humming in hand for? I, I, you know, I, you have $300,000. You're 32 years old. You have $300,000 in superannuation. Just go and buy property. Just grab something, you know, and, and you might not get all the benefits, and, but you'll get something. Hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I said, then I just said to him, which you've heard me say to you before, I said, you know, you know all the building that I'm doing at the moment and, and how I'm getting all those subsidies? And he's like, yeah. I said, you're going to pay that back for me. I was like, what? I said, yeah. You're going to pay that money that the government is giving mm, me correct. now. You are going to pay every cent of that back 
And he went, what do you mean? I said, well, your taxes are going to go up. How do you think, you know, GST is going to go up? How do you think they're going to get that money back? And the people who are going to do that are you. Now, the question is, when this happened, did you take advantage of that? When your kids are 20 and they're saying, hey, Dad, you remember the bank was giving you money? Did you take advantage of that? How the fuck are you going to answer that question? Mm, yeah. You better be able to answer exactly. that question by going, fuck yeah, I took advantage of it, son, and here's a house for you, or here's, you know, here's a, a good start for you, because we were able to roll that effect on. It's crazy that people just don't get, they're like, still in some cases, like a rabbit in the headlights, you know? I also will say, I, I, I wanted to ask a question around this. A year or so ago, they were talking about the fact that people had money, Rachel, but they weren't spending it, right? And they were saying, you know, they were trying to get people to spend. So people had money and savings. They were so startled by what happened in 2008 that they were frozen, like just gathering their fucking nuts. You mm. know, what are we going to do with it? How do you think that's affected now? Do you, are people starting to spend? Look, I think people are being discerning on that spending outcome. So you've got, you've got. It was struck. You were struggling to get finance because you know the bank would go through. Oh, you've got Uber Eats, or you've done this, or you've yeah. done that. And as far as we're concerned, you'll do that for the next hundred years. So right. you can't borrow, so therefore go away. Right? right. So you've had to clean all that up. You've then got this nervousness around. Um, you know, the Australian, particularly in WA, I'll talk to WA. Was going six six years in a downward cycle. Where was the bottom? Like yeah. Because we didn't know where the bottom was. Why? What? You didn't have to run out and buy anything. Mm -hmm. You then had. Did you say sixty years? Six six si years. Six period. years. So right, right. We peaked in two thousand and fourteen. That's right. when the mining boom ended, and right. then since then we've gone backwards because we've had uh, a negative migration into the state. Yeah. Because pe the jobs weren't here, they've gone east. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you had in the east the issue was uh, again lending. So in uh, at the height of I'll use new land stats in Melbourne as an example. At the height of the uh, of pre the um, Royal Commission, twenty two thousand lots per annum were being sold. We dropped down to twelve or eleven thousand uh, last year. Wow! So that pulled, obviously, that m pulling all that money out of the market, which you kind of had to because there was a lot of speculation from, right. you know, families were buying a lot, ten people were buying a lot, reselling it before the development finished, mm -hmm. making their ten percent and moving on. So it wasn't actually creating houses. But all of that put nervousness in because people are like, well, what do I do with my money? Right, 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 right. right so it's right, a hard right. one to explain because you sit there going, for me, I, I, I personally feel there'll be some sort of clean out in the stock market because how can you have the American economy go backwards 32% with COVID mm -hmm. at the moment and you've got the FANG stocks all at all-time highs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, the stimulus checks are stopping or they're dropping. Yeah. It fundamentally, and I follow the work of an economist called Phil Anderson, and he talks about cycles. You know, this is the mid-cycle slowdown. Right. We'll have a couple of years of where the market will clean itself out, yep. and then it's the boom is to 2026. Then that's the really big one of, like, the next big clean-out yeah. we'll see. And that's what we do. We cycle in an 18 – I think he talks about 18 and a half years. Happens every right. 18 and a half years. Wow. Peak to trough. Wow. And you can map it, and I've seen it time and time again. But people don't know about him because you don't hear about him. Yeah. Everyone talks about you know Paul Keating and the J curve. We always go up. We don't always go up. No. Because you have to clean out overcorrect. You overcorrect. You undercorrect. Yeah. yeah. To get equilibrium. Yeah. And that's where, you know, dragging it back to where we started. The wealth mm. principle is where you save your money when others are being. Yep. Bullish, yep. yes, and then you have to be bullish, and uh, you know this is yep. Warren Buffett when others are bearish. Yeah, yeah exactly. But you've then coming back to your comment, Mitt, you've got to be, um, you've got to have enough self worth to go. I'm going to go contrarian to what the market's doing and yep. get into the market now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because people are so fucking outwardly influenced. You know, just follow the laws, follow the rules. Don't follow. You know, don't subordinate. You know, emanate, radiate. Follow the rules. Understand how it works. It's not difficult to educate yourself on how it works. It's just not. Well, the masses are outwardly influenced. The masses are inwardly guided. And the idea here is that the people who are doing the wealth principles and they're, they're following that, they're not letting the outside world and they're not, they're not mm. at the mercy of the outside world because they have... 
their own system, they have their own power and their own finances, regardless of what's going on. In but I, I know people sit there and they think, but I'm not a master. But becoming a master of something is very easy. Mm. It's really not that difficult. But it's education. You've yeah. already given the workers. Yeah, it's there. And I, if I don't remember if you guys still do it for some people as well, if they're willing to pay for it, right? Yeah. What's that? Uh, which is, you'll help set up their wealth principles. Yeah, we have yeah. someone helping set it's up like, the wealth principles. So if they're going, mm. if you're like me and you're lazy and you don't want to do it yourself and whatever it yeah. is, there's someone offering to for a fee yeah. to do that for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always remember Horizon Accountants said it really well when they sent an email to all their clients and they said, um, um, recommending people come and listen to you guys talk. They said, we've definitely seen during COVID, there are people who have struggled and there are people who it doesn't matter because they've yeah. got their finances sorted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The yeah. amount of, honestly, the, it's been so humbling. The amount of people that have emailed us, spoke to us, contacted us, phoned us, personally messaged us going without this we would be we would never have made it without we are we have better job opportunities we and it's not just that they've made it through they've boom yeah that's right it's life-changing it's It's, it's hard to explain because you haven't (laughs) lived it but i look back and i have to remind myself too of how far i've come yeah Mm. which is why you know doing that three-year read all my history going oh my god i started from there and now i'm here and The only way is forward. You don't go backwards. Yeah. Yeah. And people are going, oh, what if I can't manage it? You can't yeah. not not manage it yeah. because it's set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's now, no reason to fall backwards because yeah. it's automatic. And it's a bit like, like it's a bit like, you know, uh, there's a great Di Martini explanation of this where he goes, it's a bit like going to the gym. If you keep doing the same weights, you're never going to grow. But if you just push yourself 10%, you'll grow. You know, when you go out and buy your house for the first time, you think, how the fuck am I going to do it? But once you've signed a mortgage, you find a way and a way finds you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You find a way and a way finds you because you push yourself to another sphere of influence. And when you push yourself to another sphere of influence, you know, it's like you attract towards you everything that you require. It's, you know, broadcast, receive, broadcast, receive. And w- when you emanate at a different level because you've educated at a different level, life rewards you. And it's, it's exactly the same thing. I think you just have to mm. push yourself don't be outwardly influenced. Listen to yourself. Make sure you've done your little bit of homework. We supply it for you. We give it to people. There you go. Just again, transformingwealth.com.au, and it's there, and you can you can see it. I mean, mm. I've got to be yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's that whole adage: you can't you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Yeah. Right? People have got to be. But you got to make you can make them thirsty, right? Yeah, you can. I think and the whole thing the for thing. me and is people, making them thirsty. Is pe- people who are life. sitting there going, "I don't know. I'm struggling. I haven't got a job." Mm. Or I've lost my really well-paying job. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. There is an answer. You guys give it to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, you so. help them find it for themselves, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. So you don't yeah. give it to them at all. You say, we'll give you the tools. It's for you to find for the answer. For you to go do it. Yeah, exactly. Cool. That was cool. Thank you so It was so good much. hanging out. Thanks for coming yeah, in. No, thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Leaving, good leaving the, uh, I was going to ask you this. I had it here before we go. Um, speaking to people in corporate... I was talking to a guy on Saturday night. He works for one of the large mining companies, and he said, "In terms of the buildings in the city, oh yeah, he said, of you. <laughs> a, yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them have leases, right? He said have leases that are gone. They have to stick to the lease. They're in it for the next two to three years. Mm. But he said he's witnessing their organisation setting them up so that they actually work from home. First off, because it seems that their productivity measures." are giving them an extra 20 to 25% productivity out of them because the guys are shitting themselves, going, Jesus, you know. And he said they're developing ways to monitor what their mouse movements are, what the keyboard movements are, so that they know they're sitting at the desk actually fucking working. But he said once these leases run out, there's going to be vacant buildings everywhere. Yeah, so I have a view, I have a very strong view on this. Uh, I believe the rise of suburban office. So if you think about it at the moment, Perth is um, the, the hub and spoke. Everyone hubs into the city yeah. and then you spend an hour getting back home because yeah. you live up in Butler, Alcamos, and you know mm-hmm. the, we haven't got the right infrastructure for you to get home in a timely manner. Yeah. I now say that in the four corridors of Perth, you will have, so I'll, I'll, I'll speak to my employer, like the NAB can have a big, like a concierge office idea that you go in, you plug in your computer, you meet clients, you do everything you need to do. Yeah. But you don't have to come into the city to do that. Yeah. I've seen the productivity increase with my guys and my staff because they're not having to, you know, pay for before school care, after school care. They're able to take their kids to the to the um, 
basketball and, and Soccer hockey and, hockey and, and yeah. you know they're jumping for you know they're not stressed because they've dropped their kids off and they're racing to the train station and mm. someone's trying to run them off the road to get there yeah, and they yeah. come in stressed and they're fueled on caffeine and yeah. they're rushing to get home to, to cook dinner and do all the other mm. things because your mm. life is hubbed around and then you know oh, i go into the office once a week it's great you socialize you meet people you do all your meetings but then you've got your quiet time we yeah. still haven't got the right answer about what that means about training new people coming through the system because right. they're not hearing those conversations around mm. you're structuring a deal or you're talking about a client or what's going on. So we've got to adapt to that. Yeah. But, you know, our boss of the CEOs, our CEO of NAB's already said it. I've got 17 buildings and I've got 30,000 people working at home. <gasps> right? So he, God. pre-COVID in Melbourne, he closed down two buildings. Really? Uh, and we were saving something like $100,000 uh, a month on um, electricity. So, yes, we have to pay the rent but we won't renew those, all those leases. Wow. So, I, I mean, it would be interesting to see because, I mean, obviously, if you know, you're not going to end up with buildings with, with you know, cobwebs hanging out of them, but you're, they're going to have to do something with them. You'll probably... Yeah, what do you reposition it? In Melbourne, Sydney, it might be um, apartments. That's really easy. Yes. WA Brisbane, I think, is harder because you don't have the population to sustain yeah. apartment living because you can buy a really nice house or a townhouse mm. Mm. Um, for the same before money. everyone rocks up here after COVID. Well, that's it's so right. nice. That's it. And look, I think definitely <laughs> there's opportunity. It, yeah. You know, it's we're all um, the beautiful thing about what we do is, uh, you know, the issue requires you to come up with a solution. So yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there are some people who are denying it, and that's why yeah. I say do not be in the denial category. Yeah. You've got to unfortunately face up to whatever it is you're looking at at the time and then ask how can I yes. get through yeah, this which is what you guys talk about all the time how yeah. can I how can I yeah otherwise you end up a blockbuster or a Kodak um, so I mean uh, this is it's, this has been a great talk can I just uh, can you just say you don't need to say which bank but what's your title what do you actually do oh okay so um, I'm happy to say I work for the NAB in the corporate institutional property area yeah so we have 34 clients that we look after but they're the biggest property clients in, in WA so right okay it's really quite exciting because you're constantly mixing in those circles of strategically like you know what's Nigel Sadley will talk to you about what he's doing across Australia and what he's seeing. Right, right, uh, right. You know, the big shopping centre owners will tell you the same thing and then you yeah. go, okay, that's happening at that level, what does that mean right. for us day to day? So, yeah. And all right. that data's out there, that's what I say. Just because I'm hanging around it doesn't mean anyone else can access it. it there's lots of free ways of yeah, finding out wow. what's going on in the market if you're willing to do the work. So, Before we finish up, Rachel, what, what would be the one thing in terms of your understanding in terms of the wealth principles and in terms of your knowledge around money that you're most grateful for and that you're most grateful to have, especially at this time? I think it's for me, it's the organisation and the system. Mm, I don't have right. to think about it now. If I make, oh, a great example, Mitch, I, um, I, you know, I've got all this stuff I need to sell. We talk about it, right? Mm. And I'm, I remember talking to you about it in Peru. Mm. Well, I've got hordes of stuff. Anyway, finally, last week, I had these golf clubs. I haven't used them in 10 years. They look brand new. Yeah. And a golf buggy. And Dad goes, oh, look, you could put I, – I couldn't be bothered putting on the internet waiting for someone to come and call me yeah. from government. Anyway, Dad goes, let's just go to cash converters. I'm like, well, that's a bit odd. I feel very weird walking yeah. through to cash converters. Anyway, in 15 minutes, the guy's given me $250, right? Right. I'd spent maybe $900 on this stuff 15 years ago. Yeah. But it was collecting dust. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a convert. And the guy goes to me, which was, I was just astounded. He said to me, during COVID, they were classified as essential service. So their doors were open. Shit. They are stripped bare. You walk wow. into the cash converters because people yeah. were spending their stimulus checks, yeah. which is very unfortunate, I think, because mm. you could have done other things with the money. But I'm of going, course. I'm happy. And he goes, you bring anything in, we'll quote you on it. And I thought, oh. And then I looked on the internet. They'll buy anything. They buy tools. They buy golf clubs. They anything. will buy yeah. sewing machines. They will buy knitting equipment. Yeah. They might give you a couple of bucks, yeah, yeah. but I'm going, that was $2 or $5 more yeah, that I had. didn't have. And look, because I've sat on this hoard of stuff that I'm like, it's too good to give to um, – it's too good to just give away to charity yeah. if I know it's got a monetary value, mm -hmm. but I am not – I'm too lazy to photograph it, put it on eBay. I'm just going to put it in the car now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and take it down there. So that, but it, that's a long way of saying the $220 then goes mm -hmm. into the wealth principles. And you, I, my options are to just put it into savings yep. 
or if I've got maybe it becomes a thousand dollars, you drop it into the system and it pays out in the percentages of yeah. Yeah. what the system tells me to do. I don't yeah. have to make any decision. Yeah, now. isn't yeah. that beautiful? The that money comes in, it just drops in. I, There's no emotional attachment to it. No, it's just no, the it's system runs the finance. Incredibly liberating yeah. on many levels. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, one, one of the things that I use regularly, and I mean, I just do it because I'm a haggler. You know, I'm an old dealer. Is, marketplace. Is marketplace on yeah. Facebook. Well, see, I just Jesus. doesn't. It doesn't appeal to me to do it. I, know, I, I admire. I admire those who do it because I think it's fabulous. I, I joined totally all those it. Facebook sites. Mm. And I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. I just don't. Know I why. don't have the energy for it either. Yeah. He loves it though. I love it. I, I think. I absolutely think. Absolutely, one of the best things. I have my kids doing it and everything. So my kids do all the haggling and everything else. You've left me again super optimistic about the financial future of, of WA and um, and for our people who follow the principles. Thanks for coming in here today. Oh Rachel. no, thanks guys. Really, I appreciate really, really, really appreciate thanks you, Rachel. Thanks, thanks so much. If you found this information inspiring, make sure you subscribe and tune in to the next Dorothy and the Dealer podcast.